I'm wearing my pajamas and uh, you know, I don't care because I wanted to be comfortable. Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we're gonna be doing the in or out tag. Before we get into anything bookish, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments, do you crack the spines on your books? All right, so the in or out tag. This was originally created by Rick McDonald, and I'll put a link to his video in the description down below. I, however, was tagged by the wonderful Rosie Cockshut, and I'll put a link to her video right here. I feel like my lipstick is putting off some like minor Rosie vibes, so perfect. So this is a list of questions slash prompts, and you tell us whether you're into them or not. Starting out easy, reading the last page first. Absolutely not. I don't understand people who can do this. Half the time you either don't understand what's happening or you're just totally ruining the book. Then what's the point of the experience? I, I don't get it. Not to be aggressive on anybody who does this, but I don't understand your brain. Next one, enemies to lovers. If you've literally spent any time around my channel, you know I am all over this. This is my favorite trope. I haven't gotten burnt out on it yet. I have found new romance tropes that I like as well, but this this is my comfort spot. I love these. These are my favorite. I have a whole video reading them. Next one, dream sequences. So is this like a section of the book where everything is a dream? You don't know it until it ends? Or is this, you know it's a dream, but you're in it and you're experiencing the character's dream with them? I need clarification, but either way, I don't really have that much of a preference, honestly. It's fine. I guess I might be a little annoyed if I get all the way through a dream sequence only to find out nothing that happened prior was real, but I usually don't really mind it. After that, love triangles. Out. I'm not really a love triangle person, honestly. I've just never enjoyed them. Nine times out of ten, I always have one person I like more than the other. I'm constantly rooting for the one I like, but then inevitably we're gonna have to see something where the main character likes the other one and I'm just gonna be annoyed by it. I don't think I've ever had a love triangle situation. I've rooted for one person and then eventually changed my mind. I've pretty much always rooted for the same person. I don't know how often I'm right in the end though. I should probably look back on books I've read with love triangles and think about that. Out. Next one, cracked spines. Yeah, I don't really care. I guess in, if I crack a spine, I crack a spine. I'm not one of those people who will barely open the book so I can read it but keep the outside pretty. Like, no, I full out. I don't think I have any that you can like easily see. Oh, actually, Order of the Phoenix. It's a hardback. If you were to actually look at it, that's that's fine. Super cracked. Next question. Back to my small town. I think it's been done a million times, but I don't really have any issue with it, so I suppose in. Next one. Monsters are regular people. I guess in, what is it, like the Savage Song or something, something like that by V.E. Schwab has this sort of situation, but I haven't read it yet. The only other thing I can think of is Monsters, Inc., and I love that. Yes, in. <laughs> Next one. No paragraph breaks. Absolutely out. No way. Can't do it. It just so daunting to me because then it really showcases how much fills up the page. Also just as a previous writer, that would just hurt my heart. Please don't do that. But no, why would you make your readers experience that? Ugh. Next one, multi-generational sagas. I don't think I've ever read one, so I would be interested. I think like Homegoing is one, and I know there's another one that's fairly popular in the literary fiction area that also has a multi-generational saga situation, but I've never read one. I'm intrigued to see how it would go. The closest I can make maybe see is in Cersei, but the multi-generational aspect isn't her. It's like revolving around Cersei because she's immortal. I guess I kind of liked it there. I don't know. I'm intrigued to try it. So in. Next one, rereading. Absolutely in. I love rereading. I don't make time to do it as often because I have to plan for videos or like I like partaking in book clubs and I love reading new stuff. There's just something so fun and nice about going back to a book or a series that you know you love and you just sit down and reread it and re-fall in love with the characters or re-experience the story and sure you might know it's what's already gonna happen but it's a fun time anyway. I yes absolutely yes. Next one. Artificial intelligence. I don't really know. 
I've definitely read many in Isaac Asimov stories in which AI is definitely utilized often in very freaky and scary ways. So I suppose in, yes, I just don't really pick up a lot of sci-fi, so I don't experience it often. Next one, drop caps. Okay, this was something I actually had to look up because I knew what it was, but I didn't actually know the term for it. So drop caps is where there is a large letter and then it continues the rest of the sentence in regular font, but there's large and bold and usually in some fancy script to start off a chapter, a page, a book, yada, yada, yada. I don't really have a problem with them. <laughs> they're usually pretty. I, they don't really mess with the flow of the page for me. I think they're very aesthetically pleasing. So I guess let's go with in. Next one, happy endings. Absolutely in. I enjoy reading romance books. Of course I love a good happy ending. I Who doesn't? I used to love a good book that could make me cry. Sick Fix, when those were really popular, in YA, I was all over that, but I haven't been like that in quite a while. Usually with mysteries, I come to expect some kind of a happy ending with like a little sliver of something sad or scary or freaky embedded in it. I would much prefer happy endings to sad endings. Sad endings will probably impact me and I'll remember them more, but happy endings are just much more preferable and I can usually guarantee I always will be able to read a happy ending, whereas sometimes I'm just not mentally prepared for a sad ending. Next one, plot points that only converge at the end. I think I'm gonna say out, actually. If I can't see where the story is going, like I can't visualize and work through it and understand how we got to that ending, I probably am not gonna enjoy the story. Like the first one that comes to mind is in a book, it's a movie, Pulp Fiction, where it's, should I put spoiler alert? This movie's been out for like 30 years, but in Pulp Fiction, everything happens out of chronological time order, and then at the end, you realize everything that has happened, and you can put it all together. I don't actually really like that, because it just makes me sit and have to think after I've already experienced everything. I'd rather sit there and think about what's happening as I'm experiencing it in the story. Not really a big fan of that one. Next up, detailed magic systems. I'm gonna say N. I have a caveat with that. Detailed magic systems, as long as there is not an excessive amount of info dumping and it is not easily understandable, but I can understand it. That's definitely one of my hangups with trying to transition into adult fantasy is some of the really detailed magic systems definitely scare me. I really don't think I'll be able to understand them or there'll be so much time dedicated to it that I'll just get bored and I won't care anymore. Yeah. So I'm into it, but I'm also picky about what I'm into. <laughs> Next question, classic fantasy races. I'm definitely into them, yeah. Like have a nice fawn and like some minotaurs and some centaurs, you know, some some orcs, some elves, some giants. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be into that. I don't know if those are all technically considered races. If they're not, hey, at least I didn't start listing classes. I could have been like warrior, artificer, warlock. <laughs> That'd have been embarrassing. <laughs> Next one, unreliable narrators. Sometimes, but I feel like it overall, I usually don't end up enjoying it because, mm, no, well, I guess it depends on how it's written. If it's unreliable narrator, but I, as the reader, can still kind of understand what's happening and work out everything that's going on, then I like that, or I like it where the narrator is so unreliable that I also am completely lost and only understand everything from their pers like their thought process. I like it that way, but I feel like oftentimes unreliable narrators aren't easily written. They start to tend to lean one way or the other a little too much or too little. So I think, you know, that's just so picky. I'm just gonna say out. <laughs> Next one, evil protagonist. I have not actually read many of stories in which the evil character is the main protagonist. I've read many where they are anti-heroes and they ride that line between good and bad. I really enjoy those. But I think if I were to read a story in which it was an evil protagonist, I would have to have it one of two ways. Either the protagonist thinks they are good and what they are doing is good 
good, but in reality, as a reader, I can morally understand that it is evil. What they are doing is not great. The first thing that comes to mind is kind of a Magneto character where the basis of what he wants is good, but he goes about it in a very evil way. And I really think I would enjoy that sort of story. Right out of the gate, yes, I want to read some Magneto comics. I just haven't gotten to it. The other side is they are nothing but bad. They are purely and terrible and chaotically evil. That's what I want also. That I feel like would be a fun time. So I guess I'm going to say in, and I am realizing that I clearly need to seek out some of these stories. So drop your recs down below. Next up, The Chosen One. If you had asked me this like 10 years ago, I would have been all over The Chosen One trope. Nowadays, not so much. It just feels really overdone. It, it's had its time. It has come and gone. Let's move on to a new trope. So I'm going to say out. Next one. When the protagonist dies. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm into this because it's a shocking thing. It's impressive that an author will take that jump, but if they do the resurrection trope, nope, I am out. I don't enjoy the resurrection trope. It makes it feel so cheap whenever the author kills their character. Next one, really long chapters. Out, out. I don't, I don't like long chapters. I'd much rather have so many chapters and they're all like one to two pages, at least with that I can blast through them really fast. If a chapter is super long, I usually stop reading at a chapter break. If I'm reading a book and it's taking me forever to get to that chapter break, I usually just lose steam and end up giving up halfway through. Out, out with the long chapters. Next one, French flaps. So these are like the little flaps on paperbacks, I believe. I don't really have a preference. Honestly, they're fine, but I don't actively seek out books that have them. Middle ground. <laughs> Next one, deckled edges. I'm into deckled edges. I actually really like them. I know that is not a popular opinion. I just, I think it adds character to a book. And with certain stories, I think it works with the aesthetic of it. For example, Circe up there has deckled edges. And I don't know, it just fits with the entire feel of the story. So I think it works very well there. Not all books work with it, but those that do, I really appreciate it. It just adds a little bit more character to the physical book. Next up, signed copies by the author. I mean, in. Like, why Why am I ever going to complain about a book that is signed by an author? Next up, dog earring pages. No. Out. Nope. 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 Don't deface a book like that. That hurts me. That hurts me. I guess if you're dog earring stuff to like mark, there's something on this page I want to look back at. I can get it then, but like the people who dog ear as like a bookmark, just pick up a bookmark. Just literally pick up any little thing around you and utilize it as a bookmark. It hurts me. <laughs> Final one. Chapter titles instead of numbers. Honestly, in, I think it's impressive when an author can come up with that many different things that correlate and work as a title, but then also relates to whatever is happening in the chapter. I think that's impressive as hell. In TJ Klune's Green Creek series, many of his chapters actually have two names, and that's crazy impressive, honestly. That's four books right there, and most chapters have two names. Wow. Wow. Honestly, wow. Okay, so that is it. As this is a tag, naturally I have to tag some people, so I'm gonna put all these wonderful people down below if you're interested in following them. First is Britt at Slanted Spines. She always tags me in things, so I have to tag her in something. After that is Kay's Palette. She is a newer booktuber, and I have recently found her stuff, and I really enjoy it. And then finally, Paige at the PM Reader. It feels like it's been forever since I've tagged Paige in something, so here you go. All right, guys, so that is it. As always, thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. If you wanna keep up with what I am reading, my Storygraph, Goodreads, and Instagram are all linked in the description down below. Go give me a follow. Make sure to hit like and subscribe as well. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye!